get it approximate. You can see that'll show me where to cut with the bandsaw later on that end. Uh, I'll get it approximate and always cut more less off than you need to, and then I can file back. So with that, uh, we're ready to start um, uh, doing some of the uh, the drilling uh, on those corners. So I'll pause here and you'll see that continued in the next clip. Okay, now that we've got our uh, piece uh, that we're going to drill into, I wrote on this piece uh, in just because that's the inside uh, of the flange that I'm going to want. Uh, one of these um, ribs will be on the top of the uh, rudder and so uh, I just wanted to mark which way that way uh, which way I'll know to fold the flanges in a little bit. So first thing I do is get a drill bit, uh, kind of a starter bit. Uh, one, this bit is big enough to do the hole for where my temporary screws are going to go through the center of the rib uh, here and here uh, through the mounts of the uh, uh, the mounts of the form block and then so I'll drill those two holes which I've center punched uh, and actually they're on the side so I'll drill those two holes here and then I'll drill these two holes the starter holes both of these uh, the plans call for bigger drill bits uh, a quarter inch and uh, five sixteenths but I don't want to go straight in with that big bit. I want to get it started so I don't wobble and I get it straight. So uh, here we go. I think the center punch is one of the best uh, inventions. It gets your drill bit started just in the right place. So I got my two center holes done. That's where those temporary those temporary screws are going to go in. And now these two holes I'm going to open up just a little bit more. So I'm going to replace my bit. With uh, my quarter inch bit here. Double check on the plans. Which one is supposed to be the quarter inch? Okay. I just gotta double check which holes you're drilling. So this is the quarter inch hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of line it up before I start the press. And there we go. Place this bit with the 5 16 for the other corner flange. It's a pretty decent sized hole. Yeah, a drill press is pretty valuable, obviously. Those of you are debating whether to get a drill press even for doing the tail kit, it's pretty valuable. Um, uh, you can get one on Craigslist, pretty inexpensive, and you can always use a drill press for other things around the house, uh, even if you don't follow through with the plane. Uh, I'm going to get my hole lined up. i hold my hand over here. All right. <laughs> All right. That takes care of our holes, so back to the table to mark these holes. Now we're back to our piece. You can see the whole thing here. I come in a little closer, and I'm going to draw my cut lines uh, for the edges of these flanges. And I know they need to be 90 degrees. I'm going to draw them just to the inside of that uh, hole. 
I'm gonna see how that's gonna make out here. See, and we'll do the same thing on this edge. And this guy over here. And that will take care of where we're gonna cut with the bandsaw. And we'll get this cut over here. And once we have those cuts done, uh, we are ready to uh, uh, bend this flange, bend the flanges. Okay, here we are. We're ready to cut these lines here. So we're just going to cut around. This may be a little shaky video, but you'll get the idea with these couple quick cuts once we turn the bandsaw on. You notice I sometimes use a bandsaw before I even go filing to kind of go back and forth to uh, get close to my line. But you can see there's still a little bit of line left there. Uh, that's what we're going to do next is uh, go back and file that off. Okay, now that we've got all our cuts made, uh, we're ready to file all the edges and sand them down so that uh, this part will be finished once we bend the uh, flanges. Um, Anyway, I like to start with my round file and just try to smooth out that edge. It's hard to get the Vixen file in on a flange edge like this because it takes quite a bit of force to uh, get, go in the right direction. If you put too much force, you're going to cut into that curve. It won't be smooth anymore. So I just like to use it like this. Doesn't take much force at all, very little force. And then you get a pretty darn nice, get a pretty nice smooth uh, turn there. Now you'll notice this whole time I still haven't removed the plastic protective cover on either side. And I have to say I really enjoy that because then when you're ready to install it, it's very clean. You haven't scratched the surfaces at all. Very smooth. Um, so I got to do that on both sides. I did that one side. Helps to get the edge you're filing against up against the table. If you get your line really close to the hole, you're not going to have to do much of this. You know, the point here is not to have any burrs and to be smooth to the touch. I still go back and sand this afterward. Uh, I'll kind of show you that next. And then for your long edges, of course, you, the Vixen file is the best. Uh, is really a nice technique to use. smooth edge really easy smooth to the touch what you're looking for uh, and so if you go around and file all these edges then we're ready for our final step of uh, uh, folding the uh, bending the flanges in